For only the second time ever in franchise history, the Seattle Kraken have an NHL Stanley Cup playoffs game day. That's right. We're taking on the Colorado Avalanche in game two, the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. My big bad bold prediction for tonight, we're headed to overtime. Let's talk about all that and more on this episode of Locked on Kraken. From the depths of the standings in year one to the base of that playoff mountain in year two, the Seattle Kraken have clinched their very first spot in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Locked on Kraken, your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked on Kraken. I'm your host, Erica L. Ayala. We appreciate you making us a part of your daily routine, especially the everydayers. So if you're an everyday listener, then you know that tonight we're having a watch party on playback, just as we did on Tuesday. And we're going to get into the details. Stay tuned. But I started the show with a big, bad, bold prediction. Um, I'm going to get into that. I'm also going to give you three reasons why the Seattle Kraken are going to win the overtime game against the Colorado Avalanche. That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. Each segment, you'll get one of the three reasons I think the Seattle Kraken are going to win. But first, let's talk about why I think we're going into overtime or more maybe a shootout in the last 11 road games for the Seattle Kraken. They have a nine and two record. The, the losses there, we had a loss to Vegas and uh, I believe it was Dallas in there out of 11 games. Five of those games went into overtime, almost half of the games, but 11, how do you split that? So, Basically, half of the games went to overtime, including a shootout. There you go. That's the extra 0.5 right there. Um, we won those games with um, the and including an overtime win against Dallas, a shootout win over Nashville, and you guessed it, an OT win over the Colorado Avalanche. Now, the reason I think we're going to overtime is because this is a Colorado team that, as we talked about on yesterday's episode, seems to be a little pissed off. Their players seem a little pissed. Their beat writers seemed, seem a little pissed. Everyone who's doing sports betting, we'll get into that, seems a little pissed and still underrating us, the Seattle Kraken. And listen, I get it. I get it. We didn't have a great season. I've talked to you here about that we lack at times consistency, but don't forget, we earned outright our spot in the postseason. We were not waiting on some random odds. The egg boils two times over and the penny is found heads. No, 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 no. We earned this. We earned it. So if you've watched my clip with Everett Fitzhugh, he said that yesterday I showed you the tweet from Piper Shaw. She said it. Now, you can take that a few different ways. I choose to take it as these are people who know the team, who've been around the team, and know when and where and how and why the team thrives. Now, you could say they're homers and truthers, and I certainly, generally speaking, not speaking of Everett or Piper, Everett's been on the show before. We got to get Piper on the show. Um... And you know that I adore them, love them more than my luggage. And I have said that I feel at times we can be a little bit Pollyanna, the collective we as a beat. I do think 
I am not saying it's because of that episode, but I do think since that episode, we have seen things be a little bit more balanced. And I've loved the real talk and at times the critiques that we get from this team. That being said, the Seattle Kraken have earned their spot in the playoffs, but it's not going to be easy. But you don't have to take my word for it. Let's head over to Jordan Eberly talking yesterday, which was an off day for the Seattle Kraken. At least it was an off ice day for the Seattle Kraken. And then I'll give you my first reason why, although I do think we're going into overtime tonight in game two, my first reason that I think Seattle ends up winning. But first, let's take it over to Jordan Eberly. Yeah, I mean, each each game is different. You know, I, I definitely, I think the biggest strength of our team, we've said it all year, is our depth. And obviously we, we, we used that last night. So, um, you know, I think there's going to be highs and lows in the series. There always is. Um, the, the, the biggest thing for us is not to get too high. I think we know our opponent over there. We know um, the team that, that they have. And obviously this is a new experience for us as a team. There's a lot of individuals on this team who have been in long runs of one cups. And I think that's important that we have that experience. But, um, you know, it's about getting back to, to ground level. What's, what's the challenge in keeping the foot on the gas pedal tomorrow and keeping up that same intensity in game two? Well, I, I think we, we just got to try and stick to what we, we do best, and, and that's roll four lines and play fast and play aggressive. Um, you know, I, I really like that we didn't really dip our, uh, our toe in the water yesterday. We jumped right in, and we knew that you know, we have a lot of respect for that opponent over there. So, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is we have to understand that, you know, they're, they're, they're the the defending cup champions for a reason and, and they're going to bounce back and they, they're going to have their best. So we definitely have to have ours. Hey Jordan, would you uh, evaluate your line last night? How do you think you guys did? Yeah, I mean, we, I thought we created a few chances and, and uh, you know, we were even on the plus side. I think obviously playoffs, when you get into a, a chance, it, 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 the game gets a lot tighter. You're not going to get as many scoring chances as you usually do maybe during the regular season. So, um, you know, we're going to be a big part of this series and, and uh, you know, we're going to have to find the score sheet. But the biggest thing is we're going to keep the puck out of our net too. So um, we obviously did that last night and, and uh, you know, I think for the most part, if you look at our team and the way that we're with the makeup, and we have contributions from each night from different lines, and um, you know that's why we're successful. Momentum exists in, as much in the playoffs as it does in the regular season. Oh, more. Um, you know, I've, I've always said momentum and during the regular season seems to be game to game. If you go on win streaks, you go on losing streaks. Um, in the playoffs, it seems to be shift to shift. Things just uh, exponentially get. Um, you know, magnified and, and with plays and, and, and individual uh, uh, mistakes or whatever seem to end up in the back of your net. So, um, you know, you really have to be dialed in and focused. And um, that's what makes it, makes it so much fun. And so you heard Jordan Eberly just now talk about things like they didn't wait. They know that Colorado is a good, skilled team, but he's proud that his team got after it. You also heard him talk about his line and contributions throughout the roster. Now, we've talked about that before, and I want to talk about that a little bit later on the show, specifically thinking of Eberly's line. But first, as promised, although my bad, bold prediction for tonight's game is that we're going into extra hockey, free hockey, Here's point number one, why I think the Seattle Kraken are going to win tonight. The nerves are out. The nerves are out, baby. We see, and we've been rewarded for playing Kraken hockey and getting a win against the defending champions in their barn, on the road, and we are road warriors. Come out to play. Some of you will not get that reference, and I'm okay with that. For those of you who do get that reference, holding you in my heart. Anyway, anyway, come out to play. Yay. Yes, we have come to play. I don't care what the odds say. I don't care what the pundits. That's more of a, I'm watching Madam Secretary, so that's more of a political thing. I don't care what the experts say. We, the Seattle Kraken, have come to play. We're not just happy to be here, taking our little lap around. We have come to play. So that's what I like about this squad, okay? We're here to play. 
We're not messing around. And we know that there is a job to be done. All we need is three more wins in this series. Three more wins against Colorado. And we were a perfect three for three in Bell Arena in the regular season. I mean, should I end the podcast? Should I end the podcast right there? No, we're not going to do that because I have two more reasons. Also, apologies if I'm a little bit loud. I can't even hear myself. This head cold throwing me for some loops here, but that's how excited I am. We're here. We're talking about it. I still have my other. Hello. I've got three reasons total. I gave you reason number one. The nerves are out. Two more reasons why, although my bold prediction is that we're going into overtime, I've got two more reasons why the Seattle Kraken win this game. That's coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken is brought to you by Built Bar. If you are looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar on the market, and that's Built Bar. And you got to try it. I've talked to you about Built Bar before. I still have the, uh, I believe it's the birthday cake in my freezer for days like, I'm not going to lie, right now, where I need an energy boost, and maybe I haven't made it to the grocery store, maybe I just don't have the energy, hello, head cold, to uh, make an, a lunch snack or something like that. This is a healthy and amazing tasting snack that I can have so I don't get hangry. I'm not sure how Bill does it, but the bars taste like a candy bar while still maintaining amazing macros. We're talking 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Now, I used to tell you way, way back in the day, and the everydayers, you know this, that uh, you had to order them at Bill.com. You can still do that. You can absolutely still do that. Do that. But you can also go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club and get your favorite flavors and pick them and choose them if you so choose. You can still do that at built.com. So if you're close to Sam's Club, you can get a 13 bar box, which we love for you. Or if you're at Walmart, you get a, a four bar box. And that includes cookies and cream, double chocolate, double chocolate is one of my favorite, or the coconut puffs, which is my sister's favorite. So make sure you don't be out in these streets, especially not for the playoffs. We we got to keep our energy, just like the Seattle Kraken. Make sure you grab Built Bar today. Thank you, as always, Seattle hockey fans, for making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily routine. I am especially grateful to the everydayers. As promised, we're going to hear... And if you're an everydayer, I told you that we'd get to some more audio from yesterday's media availability. Now, there wasn't a practice, but there was a media availability. So earlier in the show, you heard from Jordan Eberly. Now, Eberly and Dave Haxtell have a little bit of a difference of opinion when it comes to momentum. You heard at the end of that clip in the first segment that Jordan Eberly believes that momentum is not only key in the playoffs in the postseason, but but shift to shift, the momentum is important. Now, we've heard Dave Haxtell before, and he re-emphasized that yesterday. We played it on yesterday's podcast episode. He doesn't believe in momentum carrying over, especially from game to game. He does believe in determination carrying over. And I think that goes into my reason number one, why although my bold prediction is that tonight's game goes into overtime, I think the Kraken go up to nothing in the series. And let's get into some specifics, some, uh, you know, some stats, if you will. And let's talk about the penalty kill. Okay, let's talk about the penalty kill. The Seattle Kraken were perfect on the penalty kill. And this is my second reason why I think the Seattle Kraken are going to win tonight. Three reasons I'm giving you why Seattle takes the game tonight. Here we go. We were perfect two for two on the penalty kill against the Colorado Avalanche. Um, let me pull this up so you can see it even better. All right. Here we go. 
the penalty kill. Now, granted, as you can see right here, the Colorado Avalanche were also 100% on their penalty kill. Now, that's something we got to work on, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But um, the penalty kill, we were two for two last, or excuse me, the other night in game one, and six for six in the regular season against the Colorado Avalanche. And again, we had a pretty good record against the Colorado Avalanche. We stuck it to them. We were able to hang with them. That's why I like our chances. The penalty kill has been something that you know has been an Achilles heel, if you will, for the Seattle Kraken special teams overall. Again, power play, don't know where it went. And I love that I saw a comment on yesterday's episode on YouTube. If you're not already commenting, make sure you do that. It's a great way to engage things, and I'll give you a shout-out. So Striatic talked about, is it really a good idea for the team not to practice, especially since the power play was a struggle, and we talked about the heat maps on yesterday's episode. Now you know, if you're an everydayer, I agree with that. And, and... I'm okay with the Seattle Kraken getting a little bit more rest. If they can do a mind exercise, Jedi mind tricks, and walk through things without being on the ice, for now, I'm okay with that. But when we get to Seattle for games three and games four, I don't want any of these excuses, okay? So just put a pin in that. But the penalty kill, power play, We've got some work to do, but the penalty kill is reason number two. Not the strongest argument, but the stats don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Two for two in game one, six for six in the regular season series against the Colorado Avalanche. That's why I like our chances. That's why I like our chances. And, uh, you know, the Seattle Kraken have a way of stepping up, right, at opportune moments. We've seen that throughout the history of this squad, particularly this season. This is a big game. When we get into a flow and that game on Tuesday mwah, felt good. Was it perfect? No. Did we take a few hits literally and figuratively to the face? Absolutely. But we weathered the storm for the most part, stayed calm. I told you, well, let's keep an eye on Jared McCann. They're, I really think Colorado is trying to agitate Jared McCann. And why wouldn't you? 40 goal scorer, 70 points, lighting up the lamp for the Seattle Kraken. Yeah, they want to disrupt him. That's where I go back to, again, talking about the depth that we have. We don't need McCann game one, game two, especially if we can get a win in game two. But when it comes to the crowd at home, when it comes to closing out this series, if we're in a position to do that, we're going to need Eberly, Beneers, McCann, and Dunn. We're going to need them. So let's keep up. We're going to put that skirt in the parking lot because I told you what my bold prediction is. I'm giving you the reasons I think Seattle is going to win. Now I could be wrong with my gut. You know, I've, I I go on my auntie vibes. I've saged the apartment, especially as I'm dealing with this cold that you can probably still hear in my voice. Um, I, I, I want to open up to possibility while also just saying, I feel good. I feel good. That is going to lead to another conversation that you might not like, that you might not like come Friday. I'm just going to be honest. You might not like it. But I got to go with vibes. I've been wrong before. I didn't even think we were going to make the playoffs. I've been wrong about Morgan Geeky. He scored Tuesday. But I'm just telling you what my vibes are telling me. And then I'll give you stats that either support my vibes or that they don't support my vibes. We're going full on supporting my vibes today. We're going to overtime. Seattle's going to win. So coming up next... I'm going to give you my third reason, and we're going to go to Kate Shefty for the Seattle Times, of course, on the beat to help me out here. But I've already given you 11 games or 11 road games. Our last 11 road games were nine and two, 
Five of those have gone to overtime, including one shootout. And without fail in those OT games, we have come out the victor. I like our chances, even though I think we're going to have to work for it. And that's because Colorado's not trying to play any games. If I were Colorado, yeah, I'd want to get a win at home before coming to Climate Pledge Arena. Or would I? But again, that's for tomorrow. I got to talk about I got to talk about playing at CPA. It's going to be uncomfortable, but if you're an everydayer, you probably know what's coming. That's coming up on tomorrow's episode, but coming up later on today's episode, I give you my third reason why we're going to take game 2. It's going to go to overtime. That's my prediction, but we're going to take it. I'm going to get a little <coughs> Excuse me. Going to get a little assist from Kate Shefty over at the Seattle Times. This, for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. That's huge. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know if the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride! Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Let's ride indeed, Seattle Kraken fans, Seattle hockey fans. We've got, I mean, the Thunderbirds have advanced. Coachella Valley won over Tucson. I spent some time with the Tucson Roadrunners, so while I'm sad for Kim, and I'll talk a little bit more about that probably um, in an off-season episode, um, I'm, of course, thrilled for Joey Decord and the Coachella Valley Firebirds. Probably talk about that a little bit tomorrow for Firebirds Friday. I haven't really gotten back into the groove there, but we'll have a chance now that all of our affiliates and even some Seattle local teams are in the postseason. All right. I told you I had three reasons. Although this game is going to go into overtime, that's my prediction. I'm giving you three reasons why the Seattle Kraken is going to win. I already gave you reason number one. The nerves are out, baby. That's what we talked about in segment one. You heard from Jordan Eberle. In segment number two, I talked about special teams. Talked about the PK penalty kill. Two for two last game in game one. Six for six in the series, the regular season series against Colorado. We were three for three at Bell Arena against Colorado. So I'm liking our odds there. And as promised, uh, reason number three comes by way of Kate Shefty. She wrote this for the Seattle Times. Now, I love this open. The Kraken stuck to the formula. Let's pull it up for those watching on YouTube. If you're not, uh, you can listen to my raspy voice as I read this to you. All right. The Kraken stuck to the formula Wednesday and stayed off the ice, choosing to rest and recuperate the day after the franchise's first playoff game. It was a 3-1 road victory against the Colorado Avalanche, who won the Central Division. Now here comes reason number three. Support for reason number three. According to Hockey Reference, the game one winner takes the series 68.3% of the time. Teams that go up 2-0 advance 86.4% of the time. And goes on to talk a little bit more about that with some players. I, I just want to say that again. Reason number three. That I like our chances in game two is because we want these odds. And I'll get to odds from a, a sponsor, not sponsoring today's episode, but does sponsor Locked On in a minute. If we win tonight, when we win in overtime tonight, 
our odds of taking the series jump from 68.3%, which they're at now since we won game one. They jump from 68.3% excuse me, to 86.4%. Talk about putting yourself in a good position. Now you're playing the numbers games. You have to still win the games. But there's a reason. And although Dave Hack still doesn't like momentum, we know Jordan Eberle does. And I kind of do as well. Put yourself in a position. You can have maybe an off game in between because you've built that cushion. Now, I'm not advocating for an off night, although, again, we'll talk tomorrow and I'll tell you why three or four might be an off night for Seattle Kraken. We'll get into those stats. You might not like it, but we're going to talk about it. I like those odds for us. If we can get out the gate knowing it's like a... Uh, we know Colorado is a big, bad team. They're a serious team, serious contender, have been for a couple of years, and now coming in as the defending champs. So you respect that. You heard Eberly talk about that. This team respects that, but not more than we respect ourselves, baby. To have 86.4% chance to win this series... By taking care of business early, you know, there's a country song. I don't remember who sings it. I used to work at a at a bar, restaurant bar that had a country theme. Yes, it was Texas Roadhouse. Anyway, so they used to play country music in there all the time. But there's a song like, why wait another minute for something that you could have done yesterday or something like that, right? Seize the day, carpe diem, all of the things. We don't need to wait. <laughs> we don't need to wait to get to Climate Pledge Arena. You know, we don't need to wait for games three and four or five, six, seven. Get done what you can get done now. And that's why I advocate for the rest. Now, you know me. I'm like, oh, we talking about practice. Every day, as you know, I be talking about practice. We need to jump. We need to jump out of the gate like a, Fish out of water like a bat out of hell. Bang, bang. That's a, that's Madonna. Some of you might know that. And for those who got that reference, holding you in my heart. Anyway, we need to come out of the gate. And if, if we need rest, get those legs rested. Get the mind and mentality right. I'll take that. Then we need to grind when we're at home. A little bit more of a routine that we can control. I'm okay with that. 86.4% odds in our favor. We got to take it. Speaking of odds, I told you I wanted to head over to FanDuel. FanDuel has some odds here. I have told you personally, while I am not a betting woman, uh, I do think it's it's interesting to see these odds. So we've got minus 128 plus 104 uh, minus 128 for the Seattle Kraken, uh, plus 104 for the Colorado Avalanche, and that's the total. They also have the money line as well as the spread, uh, plus 180 on the money line for the Seattle Kraken, minus 220 for the Colorado Avalanche, and you can see some of the other odds there. Uh, listen, listen, listen. Ooh, ooh, haters going to hate. Uh, but baller's going to ball, shot caller's going to call. That's what we want to be. Yes, that was another s song reference. I don't know. That's where my head is right now. We're going to overtime. I give you three reasons why the Seattle Kraken are going to win. I gave you all kinds of cliches. Probably, I hope that some of you are going to be super amped for today's show. And I need that energy going into tonight. Come watch on playback. I'm going to be souped up. As soon as I finish recording and posting this podcast, I have a few errands to run and then I'm sleeping for the rest of the day so I can be ready for this game. And you're probably not going to like tomorrow's show. Regardless, we win, we lose. Tomorrow's show for the everydayers, it might be a little tough because I, I just got to go with the numbers and give you my analysis. So I'm just letting you know now. Go get your happiness Go get your feel good today because tomorrow it might be a different conversation. All right, folks, that's, I mean, 
I feel good about what we accomplished today. I gave you my three reasons why um, the Seattle Kraken are going to win. I gave you my big, bad, bold prediction based on uh, our trend of road games. I would love for us to get this done in regulation. Now, the points, of course, don't matter none. It's just about the win. So we'll see what happens there. Finally, want to get you out of here on this. Three Game Essentials by Bob Condor. What does he have to say? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Three Game Essentials from the one and only Bob Condor. Number one, what could it be, family? What could it possibly be? Oh, my. Is Bob Condor agreeing with me? You better believe it. You better believe it is getting the jump again. No fan can expect the Kraken will repeat game one's feat of scoring goals within the first four minutes of each period. But a fast start, goal or not, is a blueprint for stealing a second road game in this series. Well, Bob, um... Why Why can't we get a goal in the first four minutes? Why not? I agree. You got to get a, a, a fast jump. And so, yeah, scoring in the first five minutes would be amazing. I, I will take it. Especially because I think the score is going up, up, up. Yeah, I think it's going to be, whew, I think it's going to be, hee hee. I think Angelica and I are going to be screaming into our microphones a lot on playback tonight. All right. Geeky delivering on the second line. Essentially, what we're talking about here is contributions from multiple players. Loved that we got an Alex Wenberg goal. Um, So, you know, Morgan Geeky looking good there. Talked about him in some of our previews. Geeky in particular as a fourth liner. That's stepping up into a second line role as we needed different things. No Andre Burakovsky. So I love that. And thing number three, Grubauer dialed in question mark. Now I didn't talk about this one. I didn't talk about this one. And you know, if you listen to yesterday's episode, I gave Grubauer his credit as he deserved. And I do think that some of the credit was a little bit oof, oversold. There were some times where the puck beat Gruby but the puck didn't beat the post. So yes, Grubauer was great. And he'll have to be even better. I said what I said. That's our show. I'm going to take some of my uh, elderberry syrup that I cooked up yesterday right after I recorded. It's going to be a good one. We're going to overtime. That's my big, bad, bold prediction. And I gave you three reasons on this episode why even though we're going to OT, the Seattle Kraken are going to be victorious. Stick around on Locked on Kraken on social media. You can also follow me at elindsay 8 E-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y-0-8 for more, including reactions. Oh, I had this up the whole time, including reactions to the game. I will live tweet. I'm not great at live tweeting because I'm biting my nails or chomping on a sandwich to to work, you know, to settle my nerves. But we'll have something post game. And of course, you're going to want to stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. Regardless of the win or loss, I I probably have some some things that we got to talk about. We got to talk about them. I don't think. You're going to particularly like it, but let's just rip the Band-Aid off. And here's the thing. Stats are trends. They're not the gospel truth. We've still got work to do, but also Colorado is going to come with it. So who's going to win? Join us on Playback. That's right. We're doing another alongside Black Rosie Media, which is my company, and by way of the Founding Ford podcast, which is a part of Black Rosie Media, Angelica Rodriguez and I are going to be on playback. Once again, check the show notes, but also on social media for the link. We had a great time on Tuesday. (coughs) Despite the fact I was definitely under the weather, had my uh, humidifier going right in here. But don't worry about me. Don't cry for me, Argentina. I don't know. I'm just in in a mood today. 
We're going to get it done. I'm going to feel great after my midday nap. And uh, we're just we're just going to have a good time watching what I expect to be a wild and crazy game. I just hope it's a close one. That's my, that's my prediction. And my prediction is that Seattle comes away with the win. Hold fast. Stay true on this game day. Put the sticks out for Andy. And I'll catch you on playback or on the next episode of Locked on Kraken. Peace.